Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucid. We're jumping back into uh, Bumble Rumble. <clears throat> Turn 37, we're playing Atlantis. And, uh, yeah, I... So far things have been going well. If you recall in the last episode, we, uh, we jumped on top of Pelagius Fort. And, uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to come out and, uh, ping us. So, let's see what he's got. Uh, I did actually a little bit of editing after the turn to my turn file, where I tried to catch his, uh, a gym baiter, and, uh, I'll show you that anyway. We also did massive arcane probing, I think, yeah, no, we did that in part of the episode. So, we found a submerged labyrinth, which is an astral one, so that's nice. We found a fungus forest, which is here, it gives us one nature. <clears throat> Did not find anything here or here. Here we found a burial mound. Uh, which... So this is our... Uh, swamp, or Pangea Swamp, that we are site-searching for him slash us. And, uh... There's Dark Knowledge. And then I think we find one more site. Yeah, we found an Isle of Death, but this was actually not with uh, a spell. This was the guy who we put a... Skull Staff on him. He had a Skull Staff a, a second ago before I did the turn. And so I searched it up to three, and we found this. Which is a death for three sites. So we got four death income this turn. So that is a huge upgrade. I mean, we were just a hot minute ago, we were at one. Or zero. Uh, so we have done a phenomenal job getting our death income up. Which uh, is going to matter a lot. Um, being underwater with death, death access is really, really, really good. Um, we also have really good nature income, so it's possible to think that we could control um, Gift of Health. Uh, it's also possible that we could overcast Mother Oak, uh, but we will need to... And actually there's a good chance we will, because I don't really have anything to spend nature gems on too much. Um, we don't have the paths to do it yet, but if I get... if I do build a lab here, uh, and we get an Enchantress. Uh, she can do it, potentially. She can potentially, but very, very rarely, be Nature uh, 4. But uh, you can have a, what, uh, 1 in 25 chance of being uh, Nature 5? I mean, Nature 3? Uh, plus a little bit extra. So, I don't know. It's probably like a 1 in 23 chance or something of, of being Nature 3. Um... It, she cannot be astral, so she's not going to give us access to the astral paths, but she's also going to give us access to air, which we don't have. Though there is a crystal Amazon province up here. Um, anyway. Um, that is something we could do. And we do have a nature 2. Which gets us up to nature 3. When we get construction 6... Uh, we can go for uh, some of the rings of sorcery. We have a pretty solid astral income and astral bank. Um, we could also... I was going to say we could do like a really risky strategy and run up to Conjuration or Construction 8. This is not going to be good if we have to fight another war. I don't think that's a good idea. But that would fix our nature. Uh, our nature issues. Okay. Um, there's also a dire potent, uh, portent, uh, and that is Mother Oak coming up. And uh, anyway, enough about sites. Let's watch some of these battles. So, here is our thug going in to fight the shark tribe. Um, and I think I thought about doing quickness or not, and whatever, and then I decided to do it. Iron skin, quickness. Now, that may have been a mistake, because we already have heroic quickness, so we're going to attack really fast. Uh, unfortunately, we're fatiguing ourselves out, which means we're less likely to hit. And now we're basically fatigued out. Okay, and we run, but as we ran off, we take all the poison damage that accumulated, and we die. So that's shitty. That's really shitty. We kind of messed that up. We totally could have made it. We just had to chill out and not do quick and self. 
That was a really bad idea. And we lost a good bit of uh, gems and items and all that stuff. Uh, and it's going to take us forever to get back down here. And this is a large, high-income province, I believe. Like, at least at least 100 gold a turn, which is significant. So, uh, that sucks a lot. Um, coming down here... Pangea pinged me here. I'm not sure exactly why, but that's fine. Um, did he go AI, maybe? No. Okay. Um, you can't send a message to AI players. That's why you go there and check. Click send message. Okay, so this is Pangea... Uh, not Pangea. Pelagia pinging me. Uh, I think this is enough to cause gym usage. We What we did differently was we cast... Who did we cast quickness on? Oh, it looks like it targeted back here. Or did it miss? It might have missed. Yeah, I think he missed. So he should have targeted these guys. Oh, well. So quickness was supposed to go on one of them, and then we put a shark tribe on the other corner just to run to the back. And we put um, this lady in front just to cast swarm once. Uh, but it appears our guy on attack rear actually is going to run into all the little fishies. Um, and that would be bad, except I think our little fishies are going to get by. And that is the only... we just spent one nature gem. And our fishies have just threaded the needle and run right in the middle. And they kill his mage. And now... Now they're in some trouble. Okay, so that was actually really nice. We uh, killed his mage, and he doesn't have many mages inside, and each mage we kill is somebody that's not going to be spamming shit when we storm the fort. So, uh, that worked out pretty well for me. And then coming down here, we have a gold event. Basically two gold events. Um, villains attack um, Tian Chi. And uh, it's kind of a mass route. Like, both sides start routing a little, but they win. So TNG, this, this province has been attacked, whoops, this province has been attacked before by villains. It's this one right here. This is where the demon knights attacked. There's some real misfortune going on up in these lands. Wait, that's weird. Oh wait, that's Yomi, okay. Or Shinoyama. Um, okay. So we've been through all the events. Um, this, importantly, uh, we have started to destroy the fort in Pelagia. The walls are moderately damaged and more time is required to break them down. So I think last turn, I probably did maybe 20 siege damage out of 500. This turn, we did 140. Uh, so we're probably at around 160, which means we have quite a few turns left. The other big news, and I didn't see it, but I got intel from uh, Relay, is that um, he had a big army which moved up here onto Relay's cap, and at, apparently at great cost, uh, Relay destroyed it. Uh, I don't know. He sent me a battle report which basically showed almost all the knights died. Pelagia had a couple things that kind of survived, uh, but it was it was pretty bloody. I mean, they got they got wrecked. So. Yeah. Anyway, we are going to... I think I want all of this. Which is not exactly fair, but... Okay, I mean, let's just say it. Uh, Relay lost almost every major fight he had with Pelagia, right? And I won most every major fight. So, uh, I... Yeah. And most of the fights he lost were after I entered the war. So I entered the war later, and he got, you know, he got harassed. Um, but then as soon as I entered, Pelagia took all his stuff and came south for me. Uh, and there we basically repeatedly defeated him, usually with our pretender god. So, um, yeah. He, uh... <laughs> 
Oh, like we have killed, except for this battle where he did kill a lot. We have killed almost all of Pelagia's stuff, but we've also managed to kill it without losing too much of our own stuff. Um, and like, as just one metric, Pelagia has probably spent three quarters of his water gems on me and probably one quarter on Relay. So we'll negotiate what Relay is going to get. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and claim all of this. Um, what I expect uh, is that Relay is going to move here with some token force. Uh, Pelagia, I think, still owns this province, so there's a chance they retreat back this way. And if they do, um, we will catch them with these guys. Or with this guy, who's basically just going to run up and... Uh, actually, I don't know if that's really the safest. You know, maybe we switch who goes where and, like, send you here and send you here. That might be a little safer. The script we have on our pretender now is resist magic in case he does soul slay or anything. Iron skin, temper, flesh, body, ethereal, astral shield. And then for this guy, it's that. Um, and he has boots of the messenger, so he will be quite fatigue neutral. Uh, I mean, you have the one built-in reinvigoration, and then, except, you know, maybe it's better to just take the quickening off, because I think the quickening can quickening can call us, cause us uh, fatigue issues, and we've got a ring of regeneration on, so I think we're going to take it slow, actually, and do the water shield, ice shield. Uh, this will make us more fatigue neutral, where we should not get too high. Um by the time we get into combat. Um, okay. And I think this is fine. Because we're doing resist magic early, it means we get to some of our important... I think we'll switch the order of these, actually. Um, it means we get to some of the important parts of our script much later. Um, like, temper... Like, Really, the point at which we're immune to a lot of stuff is once we have all three of these up. But we're doing this first. Um, and as you can see... Actually, you know what? We're going to have fatigue issues, potentially. Um, I think these last two... I think we're actually going to do summon Earth Power and then Temper Flesh. Because we are not going to be in Friendly Dominion, which means we don't get our Reinvigoration buff. Um, and I don't, I don't know what's going to come here, but I don't think it's going to be too much. Pelagia basically lost his army to a man, though apparently at great cost to relay. So, uh, Pretender's going here, we're sending a thug here, we're sending a thug here. Uh, he's basically got the same kind of script. Um, he doesn't have this as much armor, so his encumbrance is a little lower. I think that's okay. He also doesn't have regeneration, so I kind of, I think Quick and Self, if we don't have regen, is probably the better call. We just need to kill stuff pretty quickly. Uh, and then here, we're moving this guy in to attack, and he's basically got a very similar script. Uh, and if it's just PD, we should be able to kill it. Um, we've got 10 PD here. A fair amount here. So let's, let's take a look. So... Uh, like I said, we're probably at about 160, 170 uh, total amount of kind of wall destruction. Uh, what that will mean is that there is uh, like 330 left. So next turn, we're moving in 43 and uh, not quite 24. So 43 and let's say 14. So like... Uh, almost 60. We're moving in almost 60 more. <clears throat> but we're moving out like one guy. One of the thugs here is coming out. So, um, yeah, we should be at uh, about 200 siege strength, which means it's probably two more turns. Which is probably fine. Um... Yeah, and I think we probably just go ahead and do it. I don't even know if we stick... We might should stick our head inside. He could have his Pretender up. What turn is it? 37? His Pretender, if he went in prison, which I think he did, 
His pretender will just be waking up, and I have no idea what it is, but it could potentially cause a bunch of trouble. Um, so it's probably worth sticking our head inside. It won't be next turn, it'll be the turn after. This guy can probably come back and reload. Um, we also have a shit ton of money. I wasn't able to spend it all, which is kind of a first. Uh, you can see we've turned back on recruitment. I think one of these places where, yeah, we're getting a Coral Queen here. I really want to focus on spreading my Dominion. And I think... Oh, we're also moving the Monster Fish in. He did not come out with the Soul Slay script, and because he stuck his head out, he should know my god's not there. So it's unlikely he's going to come into a Soul Slay sli uh, script against these guys. Um, yeah. So I think it's probably safe to go ahead and bring the monster fish. Uh, we are running up enchantment four, which we're almost done with. We got one more turn, uh, and then we'll continue our path up construction. Uh, we are moving this guy. He was basically fully cleated. We put we got a heart of life from an event a while ago. It gives us poison resistance, which was another component of us dying down here. Uh, we're gonna move him up here, and we're forging boots of the messenger. Uh, to go on him, which I think is really all he's missing. I think, wait, we're doing Boots of the Messenger, are we doing... We're also doing a Missile to Garland, which is going to give him a little bit more Poison Resistance. Um, yeah, and I think... Yeah, I think we're set. Uh, we don't have any way to deal with chip damage, which is kind of the problem that happened down here, too. If we had a ring of, a ring of regeneration, we'd be in much better shape. But he's going to go up here, get that, and then hopefully he can run across from there to here, and then run down and take this in a few more turns. So it's definitely slowed us down, because I probably want to get a fort over here, too, just to keep my dominion in this portion of the world. Um, we also see uh, that Gius is on top of Pangea's capital. And Pangea apparently is doing the same thing that Pelagia has done, where he's like, I know I'm going to lose, I just want to punish Ulm. Um, because his fort's cracked, so he's about to lose his cap. Um, which, I don't know if that's really that bad for me. I think it's actually kind of good. I, I think I'm going to win against Yis on land, with thugs, potentially. I mean, Yis can do anti-thug stuff, but... Um, I don't know. It's definitely going to be easier to take this back to take this from Yes than it would be from Pangea. Okay, when I say definitely, I mean I think so. Okay. Um So I think that is about it for this turn. Patrolling. We're sight searching here. I'm moving my one of the things I I like doing is kind of a little min-max thing, is making sure I move my sight searching items around, I mean my ma magic path booster items around through the lab. And if I have somebody positioned at each of the different labs, they can take it the next turn. I don't know if I've actually got anybody next turn, but... Yeah, uh, I'm making sure we get one more necromancer out. Uh, oh, I'm not recruiting anything here. Now, I've got a decision. I could make... I think I probably actually need one more, a couple more of these Amazons. These guys are going to be more useful, I think, when I can do things like... Um, Foul Vapors. Foul Vapors is not going to be helpful against Pan, but it will probably be pretty good against Shinyama. Um, though I will kind of wreck myself. Anyway, it will be good to have another one. It'd be nice to get some of the cross paths too. I don't think I have any of them yet. Which is a bit unlucky, because you get Amazons give you cross paths pretty frequently. It's 25% chance um, to get water, earth, death, or nature. So uh, any of those would be pretty useful. Uh, the water one would help me do contact Nyad, which is something we were looking at. It means I only need one booster. Uh, as it stands, I kind of have to wait till I get construction six. 
Um, okay. And then we're site searching here, but I think that's it. I think I also should probably send a message to Pelagio. And then uh, let's think what we say to him. Coalition uh, has succeeded in doing irreversible to the proud peoples, to the uh, underwater republic of Arts Okay and so I think that's it. And uh, I think I mentioned it in the, the last steps. Oh, maybe I forgot. But uh, basically, I think I said that uh, the real name for my pretender should be Honey Badger. Because he really is. I mean, he's just, he does not give a fuck. He just goes and kills shit. He's a tough son of a bitch. So um, we're going to take this... I, Relay is probably going to want these back, and um, what I might ask is to hold on to it for a little bit, and then I can give it back to him. But I probably am going to want the island. I have to see what's here too, so that's the nice thing about getting out. I'll be able to see the income, and I'll be able to see the uh, uh, the income and the the gem sites. So if they have really good gem sites, it might be worth going to war for. Uh, but as it stands now, I would kind of be okay with, like, maybe giving him one of these. Um, but I think if I give him one, then it will be okay to trade for the forest. Like, he's going to want this. And I'll, I'll probably give him this one. And I might even give him this. Uh, but then I take the fort and this one. Like, this would be okay. I would rather have this just because it's a bigger choke point. Um, so it's really, I don't have as much area to defend from him. Uh, but I would be okay. Anyway, we're going to take both because that's going to improve kind of my negotiating, I think, if, if it does come down to that. Um, and hopefully we have no more of our little thugs die. We kind of, we need to hone in our little thug equipment and I need to be more conscious, I think, about... Uh, why, why the hell is his encumbrance so high too? He should not have had huge fatigue issues. Encumbrance 4. Underwater minus one, melee encumbrance four. Base encumbrance three, okay. I think I need to figure out what kind of armor these guys are gonna need. Cause this armor, even though it only gives two encumbrance, uh, I don't- this is definitely not an ideal kit. That's kind of one of the mistakes I make too much, is I often kind of skimp on fatigue. Um, I do think the bracers is the way to go. What does this guy have? Oh, only one bracer. That's okay. I think the poison resistance will make up for it as well. Oh, he doesn't have any way to deal with chip damage. But you know, we can do, um... We can do Moss Body on him too, I think. So we might time that. And if he has Poison Resistance, then Moss Body is going to be the shit. So I think that will be the plan. 
But I do, I think, in general, need to think of a good generic kit. I mean, obviously, Boots of the Messenger is going to help a good bit with fatigue. Uh, and then, no armor, though. Oh, wait, this guy. Oops, which one? Yeah, this guy has no... very little encumbrance. He's going to have even more on land. So... Hmm. I'm going to have to figure that out. This is actually better, but it's expensive. And then this one is also one encumbrance, but also expensive, but it fixes, uh, it gives us more morale, which is really nice for a thug. Uh, it will probably depend on who we're attacking. Uh, you can see our cold scales pushing up this way, which is fine by us. I'm not sure if these guys took cold one. Does not appear so. And the, the T and Chi definitely did. So if we attack T and Chi, yeah, it looks like T and Chi has cold, but I don't think any of my other neighbors do. If I go cold, there's definitely like Rhyme Hallberg and things, which are kind of nice. Um, but anyway, I think that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, oh, did I set up the fish tank yet? Oh no, I didn't. I'm glad we came back here. Um, so the fish tank is kind of like this. They're going to run in. Everybody should be on hold and attack. And the fish tank should be with one of these guys, so we'll put them right here. And basically, yeah, they should all get this shit cast on them. Uh, do I have another guy? Okay, that's one. Okay, I think you're actually much more valuable back here. Okay. And I think with that, he's probably not going to gym bait. Which is fine by me. So I think that's it, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time.